Thank you very much to the Associated Dean, um, Mr. Rajan. Uh, thank you to Andres, too. Uh, and uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for giving me this uh, very important opportunity to share with you uh, some of um, our thoughts about uh, our own development and, uh, of course, some reflections about uh, the future of nations uh, in, in the world. I am here with uh, part of my staff, um, the Minister of Trade, you don't mind, Annabelle, the Minister of Trade. Uh, she's going to assist me in answering probably some of your questions, and also the Ministry of Science and Technology. Um, uh, so thank you, thank you, Angeli. As I told you, uh, I want to share with you some thoughts about how Costa Rica has uh, become and continues to be a leader in Latin America in democracy, human development, and environment. Let me first start by saying that we Costa Ricans have always believed in achieving prosperity through peace, freedom, and the rule of law. That is a major national understanding, and through history we have taken decision to follow our beliefs. We believe in an armed democracy, and here we are, 60 years after we decided to abolish the army, to assure stability and devote more resources to education, health, and development in general. We believed in sustainable development, and here we are, 30 years after we decided to preserve 25% of our land and became the first country in protecting the environment in the Americas and the fifth in the world. We believed in prosperity, and here we are, preceded by 20 years of constant economic growth thanks to wise international reforms and our opening to the international economy. And most importantly, we believed in human development, and here we are, with an extended and quality-oriented educational system and health indicators that are even better than those of some countries in the developed world. At the same time, Costa Rica has not been exempted from the impacts of the international economic crisis experienced during the last three years. However, thanks to our economic transformation and diversification, we were less vulnerable to the effects of the crisis and we recovered more quickly. Therefore, we continue focusing, focusing on prosperity for all sectors of the economy. Since 2000, our GDP has multiplied by more than two, our foreign direct investment has increased more than three times, and our exports have doubled. Moreover, we have successfully de diversified our export base. Right now, we can proudly say that we export over 4,000 different products to almost 150 countries around the world. Today, we are the first high-tech exporter in Latin America and the first per capita exporter of non-natural resources products in the region. Looking back at our legacy as a country, reflecting on Costa Rica's full potential and looking ahead to the policies and initiative my administration wants to implement. I envision that Costa Rica can continue leading the way in Latin America and beyond. We intend to continue implementing the right policies in sustain sustainable development. Today, more than 90% of energy comes from renewable sources, and we are determined to become one of the first carbon neutral countries. We want to prove to the world that economic development and environmental protection can go hand in hand. But foremost, we are focusing on putting in place the right policies to become one of the first developed countries in Latin America. With this in mind, Costa Rica will continue its paths towards a prosperous and sustainable development led by innovation, science, and technology. We will lead this way through our continued focus on education. This has been a long time commitment. 140 years ago, in 1870, Costa Rica decided to provide free access to primary education to all its children. This investment has paid off. 
Today, we spend 7% of GDP in public education. At the same time, we have been working in a number of initiatives that will enhance not only the quality, but the quantity of our educated and well-trained population. For example, during my administration, we will create 90 additional technical high schools so we can be able to double the number of high school students covered by this kind of education. We also keep our commitment to the Costa Rica multilingual program whose objective is to revamp English education and expand the use of language in the country to guarantee that uh, by uh, two, uh, 2017, 100% of our high school students are fully bilingual. Through these and other initiatives, we are assuring that Costa Rica continues to be among the most highly educated and competitive workforce in the world. And here, uh, here is where our trade and investment initiatives come into place. More than any other time, it is clear to us that nations are interdependent. Thus, Costa Rica will continue improving the solid foreign investment and trade platform that it has managed to build during the last 20 years. Today, our country has a dozen free trade agreements that grant our products preferential access to the largest world markets, including the United States, the European Union, and China. From Costa Rica, you can access 2.3 billion people, almost 70% of worldwide GDP making Costa Rica's export platform an ideal one to both services and manufacturing operations. We rank number three as recipient of uh, foreign direct investment per capita in Latin America. As I already mentioned, in the last 10 years, foreign direct investment flows to Costa Rica have increased more than threefold. On average, during this decade, such flows have represented more than 6% of our country's GDP. More than 200 of the leading companies in services, advanced manufacturing, and life sciences, among others, have made Costa Rica their home. But still, we want more, because we recognize that exports and investments are crucial for economic growth and the creation of new business ventures, jobs, and innovative production. This is why Costa Rica continues to bolster both. In order to accomplish our goals, we will continue to strengthen our competitiveness environment and meet public infrastructure needs in areas such as utilities, roads, transportation, and energy, for which public as well as private financing will be required. To address these needs, we have a structure and investment plan of over US $6 billion, which we intends, intend to finance through a mix of international credit, public investment, and private sector participation. The ongoing opening of our telecommunications market is among the most notable opportunities for the country in its route to infrastructure development. Since 2009, Costa Rica began the transition of the telecommunications industry from a public monopoly to one of an open market. By the end of this year, we will be able to choose among three different mobile providers under a modern, independent, and transparent regulatory framework. This is also a good opportunity to improve our digital technologies. In a couple of weeks, we will announce a digital social agenda for Costa Rica. This includes a national broadband plan to build, uh, to build a neutral fiber-based network for high-speed internet access. Our aim is to double broadband access from current 7% rate to 15 by 2014. This will put Costa Rica as the second most connected country in Latin America. The agenda also includes investment in nationwide social projects to bridge digital divides and national wireless access layer, deploying digital community centers and laptops for school children in the less developed regions. 
I cannot finish this intervention without referring to the crime issue. As you must know, Latin America is the most violent continent in the world, measured by average homicide rates. We in Costa Rica are aware that we currently face challenges in rising criminality and drug-related violence, but we are working very hard to address this challenge and contain it. My administration has launched a wide range of initiatives, including better qualified and professional law enforcement agency, law reform on crime-related issues, and violence prevention at the community level. Despite of this situation, we continue to be one of the three safest countries in Latin America. We are conscious of the challenges that lie ahead. But at the same time, we are convinced that Costa Rica has the fundamental requirements for excelling in the region and in the world. Clever and innovative people, a stable political system based on respect for the rule of law, sound economic policies, an ideal geographical position, a strong social network, and a deep respect towards our environment. We truly believe that by keeping our commitment to the values that supported the building of our nation, Costa Rica is on the right path to successful development. Thank you very much. So now we're going to have uh, questions. So anybody that has a question, please raise your hand, and I'll hand over the mic, um, and you can ask the president some questions. No questions? <laughs> In an university? <laughs> there you go. English, English. Um, one question I have is, so you mentioned uh, very recently in the last part of your speech, one of the challenges that Costa Rica is facing with rising criminality. I was wondering what are those additional challenges that Costa Rica, Costa Rica needs to uh, face in order to truly become a developed uh, country in Latin America? Okay, uh, when you talk about um, uh, becoming a developed country, uh, you are thinking in increasing uh, the, um, the, um, the per capita GDP. Uh, and that means that we will need uh, to, um, uh, to increase it in the uh, following 10 years uh, between 50 to 60 percent of our current uh, per capita GDP. How we are going to do this is the real question we have to answer. And so what we are trying to do is to continue growing based on the kind of uh, investment we have been successful in attracting during the last years. Uh, that is why we are here because we are visiting some of uh, the companies that are already investing in Costa Rica. Most of them are based on uh, high tech. Um, some of them are related with the uh, um, with life science uh, uh, industry. Uh, now we have a very good opportunity of attracting investment also in clean energies. And in terms to uh, continue being successful um, in attracting this kind of investment, uh, the most important challenges are First, that we uh, need to continue providing uh, the amount and the, the quality of human resources that kind of companies are demanding. Uh, secondly, uh, we uh, need to, to uh, invest in uh, infrastructure. Uh, that is why we are um, um, uh, putting together a very ambitious plan uh, for investment in uh, ports, roads, but basically uh, digital infrastructure. So the broadband plan is going to be quite important. Um, and uh, I will say that probably the third uh, crucial factor uh, has to do with being successful uh, in uh, tackling the problem of uh, uh, criminality. Uh, because um, although we, as I told you, we are one of the safest country in Latin America, we are surrounded by other countries uh, which are suffering of this problem. And so we don't want to be contaminated. That means that we uh, have to work very hard 
uh, in order to uh, strengthen our law enforcement institutions uh, and also trying to prevent uh, through more sound social uh, policies so we can be able to, uh, to, to face this problem. I don't know if you want to add something, Annabel. Okay. Uh, President Chinchilla, welcome to Stanford. My name is Eduardo Hurtado from Mexico. Uh, you were talking just about uh, the importance in Latin America of increasing infrastructure spending, getting investments to build up the infrastructure that the region requires. So my question is, how your ideas on how to get this infrastructure building while at the same time keep an eye on long-term sustainability and environmentally friendly policies? Okay. Uh, I think they both can uh, uh, can go together. I mean, you 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 don't you don't need to sacrifice uh, um, 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 the environment if you want to build uh, infrastructure. Not necessarily. Um, it depends on how uh, you uh, develop the projects. Uh, so, for example. Um, um, I think that we have to face, uh, in, in Latin America, probably one of the most important challenges is how we are going to organize the transportation. And so we have to start looking at uh, the um, alternative uh, uh, technologies uh, more based on uh, clean energy. Um, and that means uh, start investing from now, for example, in uh, um, uh, um, another kind of transportation, not only roads, but uh, the um, public yes, public transport, but ferroviario and then the, the ferro ferro transportation. Uh, so I, I I don't think uh, you have to sacrifice um, uh, you know the sustainability if you want to invest in better in better infrastructure. But you of course have to be very careful. For example, we in Costa Rica have many regulations concerning the protection of the environment. Uh, so every investor, when they decide to engage in any kind of big project, they are asked uh, to present um, what we call uh, environmental impact studies. Um, so they have to be able to minimize the impact. Uh, on the other hand, for example, also, uh, when you talk about some kind of industries, uh, they are trying to compensate the contamination they produce uh, through um, different uh, programs that are able to neutralize uh, the carbon path. So there are many different instruments uh, that you can um, apply in order to minimize the impact of uh, infrastructure or any kind of productive uh, project. Uh, thank you, President. Okay. Uh, over the past probably five, seven years, um, China has had a greater presence in, across Latin America. How do you view your relationship with China, um, and how do you see the evolving relationship with the United States at the same time? Okay. Uh, I would also like to uh, to be assisted by Annabel concerning the, uh, the our relationship with China. But in general terms, let me tell you that for Costa Rica, uh, China means uh, a very important opportunity. We are in certain way complementary economies. We do not compete with them. And so probably that is the key issue uh, for us. Uh, so now, for example, we uh, have already um, closed uh, um, a free trade um, uh, agreement. And uh, this agreement is about to be approved in our national Congress. But uh, for us, uh, the relationship with China is full of opportunities. But I would like you to add something else, Anna. Uh, thank you. Just very briefly to say that uh, I think the United States is our most important trade and investment partner and has been so for a long time, and I believe it will remain so for a long time. Uh, however, I think that uh, it is clear that uh, growth in the next 20 years uh, will come 70% uh, from uh, emerging markets, and China, of course, being an important one. So I think realizing this in 2007, uh, we established political relations with China, which we had, did not have in the past, and we proceeded to negotiate the free trade agreement that Madam President was uh, referring to. And now we are looking uh, at China as uh, 
as an important source of uh, investment. And uh, I must say that you know China has a strong presence in Latin America uh, because of investments in, uh, in natural resources and minerals in a number of Latin American countries. Uh, that is not the case in Costa Rica, uh, but we are looking at China for you know for investment in the productive sector so that uh, it, uh, Costa Rica can be used as the export platform uh, that we are currently are in terms of not only exporting manufacturers but also serving as a distributional hub uh, for the Americas. And also, uh, we would like to take advantage of uh, China's expertise uh, in improving competitiveness in a number of areas, for instance, in, in, of infrastructure, uh, by having Chinese investment in Costa Rica in, uh, in some of these areas. So we see, we see a, a great potential in our relationship uh, with China. We are uh, just beginning to develop that relationship, but we also uh, foresee, of course, a very strong, solid, and mature relationship with the U.S. Thank you. Thank you. There are many people over there. All of them. <laughs> Good afternoon, President. Thank you for your comments on China, because I'm a true from China. You I'm are. very excited <laughs> to hear about the good relationship between Costa Rica and my own country. My question is, could you elaborate a little bit about some factors that contribute to your success and any advice you would give to us as a student in Stanford? Thank you. Uh, 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 personal success or uh, the, the economies? Uh, personal uh, excuse, success. personal success. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. Probably you, you are the ones who can advise me <laughs> how to do things better. Um, uh, well, I, I, I think when um, uh, probably the most important thing in life is uh, uh, trying to have very strong convictions. Uh, if you don't believe in what you are doing. It's very hard to be successful. Um, if you have a strong convictions and if you uh, never leave uh, that kind of uh, set of uh, basic values, uh, um, I think you are going to do it very great. Um, the other thing I have learned is that success uh, is, is not a result of only individual efforts. Um, you are always surrounded with people and uh, so in a certain way, what is good for you has to be also good for the rest of the people. And that is also true for the nations. Um, so that is why also we in Costa Rica, for example, value so much uh, all the architecture of the international institutions because uh, as we as a small nations, uh, we need to survive in this world. We do not have an army. Uh, so, so we are quite dependent of the international institutions. Uh, but at the end, you know, it's the same with the individuals. Uh, if you want to succeed, you need, uh, you need uh, other people. So uh, I will say that probably those are my two most important uh, recommendations. Never abandon your own convictions and then uh, you have to think about the rest of the people. Uh. <coughs> Uh, hello, Mr. President. Uh, my name is David. I'm a student uh, here at the Business School. I'm also a captain in the United States military. Um, I have a question about your illegal immigration policies. Costa Rica and you just instituted some pretty aggressive uh, policies towards illegal immigrants, most of whom come over from uh, Nicaragua, similar to the problem we face in the United States with illegal immigrants coming over from Mexico. Um, do you think any of those policies that you have instituted, such as requiring Ill illegal immigrants to pay into the Social Security system or fining them, $100 a month for every month that they are there past their deadline. Do you think any of those would work in the United States? And do you have any advice for us with regards to our problems? Um, no, me atrevo. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any advice for us with regards to how um, we are dealing with illegal immigration? Yeah. Well, immigration is a, is a big scale program. Um, and um, the thing is that you you have the obligation always in life uh, to analyze the ultimate causes that are creating a problem. Uh, so I think if we were able to uh, work on the causes and not on the effects, mm -hmm. uh, probably we will have a better world. And uh, that is the situation with migration. Uh, nobody leaves their countries because they want to. Um, they leave because they need to. And so uh, what we have to do is try to create better conditions 
So most of the nations can develop according to some standards. Uh, and when you come to this uh, discussion, what you find is that there are many contradictions in the world. For example, um, we are demanding, the only, the only thing Costa Rica has demanded is opportunities, opportunities to explore uh, the result of our job. Uh, if other nations, if the big nations, um, don't give us these opportunities, we will finish exporting our people. So, you know, you, you, or either you export the result of the job or you export uh, the, the workers. And so in a certain way, we still have many barriers um, uh, in terms of promoting more free trade opportunities for all the nations, mm -hmm. try to invest in the right things like education, um, and not in, for example, armies. Um, and so I think if uh, we uh, start trying to focus again on the causes, uh, uh, we uh, won't have to, uh, to deal with such, uh, um, um, such kind of um, uh, stressing policies like the policies uh, uh, on immigration. In Costa Rica, we have received many flows of immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, first, during the, um, the, um, the military rule in Latin America, many people um, came to Costa Rica uh, just looking for freedom. Uh, and in, during the last years, most of the immigration we are receiving comes from Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And what they are looking is just uh, economic opportunities. Uh, and we, the Costa Rican people, uh, feel very um, uh, grateful to uh, these immigrants from Nicaragua because they have supported, in a certain way, the growing of our economy. Uh, but, of course, uh, we would love to see Nicaragua uh, attending the problems they already they, they have uh, concerning the employment, unemployment rates, very, very high employment rates, so the Nicaraguan people will be uh, able to stay at home. I don't know if I responded to your question, but. No, that's great. Thank you. Um, thank you, President Gentile. I'm Nama from Israel. Um, so as the first female president of uh, Costa Rica, I was curious to hear how do you view the matter of female equality in Costa Rica society and workplace? And what does your regime do to promote uh, women equality? The equality of uh, women. I will die, Henry. Okay. Um, well, let me tell you that when you analyze uh, the situation in Latin America, according to certain kind of variables, uh, I think we are doing quite well. Uh, for example, uh, in terms of political participation of women, uh, I think we are leading probably most of the indicators. Um, uh, you have now six women that have been presidents in Latin American nations. Um, for example, in Costa Rica and in uh, Argentina, uh, you have about 30% of women in Congress. Uh, when you also analyze the composition of the justices in our countries, you find many women. Uh, in Costa Rica, it's about 30%. Uh, so what you find is that we have been uh, very successful in opening opportunities for political participation. Uh, but when you analyze other indicators, we still have many things uh, to do. For example, um, the um, domestic violence. Uh, Latin America is very, very violent. Uh, as I told you, it's one of the, it's the most violent country. And part of this violence is against women just because, you know, because being women. And so the domestic violence is still a big challenge in Latin America. And also, I will say that uh, the access to economic opportunities. Uh, when you analyze uh, the rate of uh, unemployment, um, you find that most women are unemployed compared with, uh, with men. Also, when you analyze uh, the salary scales, um, Sometimes men and women are performing, performing the same job, but they are receiving less salaries for the same kind of job. So I will say that uh, the most important challenges are those two, um, the, um, domestic violence and um, more equal rights uh, concerning the uh, labor and economic rights.
here I have one and uh, another one. Hello, President Chin here. Welcome. Um, I'm a Stanford alum, and I work in the software industry. Costa Rica is an amazing country. Uh, in the brief visit that we had there, it's truly heartening to see the social conscience that Costa Rica has for uh, the uh, human spirit, your spirit of not having uh, um, an army, as well as your uh, love for nature. In the software industry, what we have found is a single person can make a difference as evidenced by the so many great companies that Stanford has created, as well as other co companies that uh, evolve. And I'm curious how Costa Rica sees this opportunity. It's indeed possible that an educated population, particularly trained in software, can change the world. And looks like in Latin America, Costa Rica is one of the countries which can indeed make a difference and can therefore earn economic advantages which are quite dynamic. So I'm curious how you're thinking of training your children, helping people understand how to create value sitting in Costa Rica, but making companies which are global in nature. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. You don't mind if my minister answers your question? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think. Uh, Costa Rica has been uh, developing a software industry for a couple of decades now, and uh, it has been quite successful in the sense that today we are the second uh, exporter of software in Latin America. Uh, this industry is composed of both uh, indigenous companies uh, that have been, um, that they, you know, the first uh, software companies in Costa Rica probably started uh, in the early 80s. Uh, there was, a, at that time, a um, number of Costa Ricans, you know, very much like the stories that you see here in the U.S. in, in their own uh, garage, you know, started their operations, whatever. A uh, number of them have uh, received venture capital from, uh, from the U.S. For instance, I remember Intel Capital investing in, uh, in a couple of them. Uh, and then they basically, uh, they have grown now and they have moved to other countries and they even have investments of their own in other Latin American countries and are exporting uh, quite a lot. But we have also been uh, very successful in terms of attracting uh, uh, foreign, uh, foreign investment in the area of, uh, of software. And we have a number of operations in Costa Rica that are uh, quite significant. Uh, you know, Intel, for example, has a manufacturing facility, but they are also doing graphic design uh, and 3D in Costa Rica. Uh, we also have a large presence of um, HP in Costa Rica. They also have a, a research uh, facility in terms of uh, uh, related to software development. Uh, and a number of other uh, big names in the industry are, are in the country as well. To do that, we have implemented a number of policies in different areas, not only educa education, which of course is, uh, is very important, uh, but universities have uh, created a number of specific projects aim at con continued growth of the, uh, of the software industry. We, I think we, we took many years ago, uh, for instance, a, a policy of eliminating tariffs on computers when, uh, when that was not fancy in the world uh, 30 years ago. Uh, so that contributed to the, to the growth of the sector. So uh, yes, it is, uh, it is an area where we find that we, we are doing quite well and we have a lot of untapped uh, potential uh, because, again, of the investment that we have done in the area of human resources. Three more. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Actually, following up on the question of human resources, I know that many developing countries suffer from uh, the situation of the brain drain, where they lose a lot of their rich intellectual capital for individuals who study abroad and work abroad and never come back home. Uh, do, you do you think that Costa Rica suffers from that? And if so, what measures are you taking to combat that? Uh, we, we, we were talking today about this issue because we have the impression uh, that probably more good people is staying abroad. However, we do not have the figure. So what we were talking about uh, was to probably perform an analysis on the following days. Um, historically, most of the Costa Ricans, uh, they go back to, uh, to their country. Uh, and we, 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 we have been able to, uh, to, uh, to enjoy uh, the intellectual uh, richness of these people. But uh, we have the feeling that probably more people 
is staying abroad, but we, we, we will need to perform this analysis. Of course, the idea is, you know, have the, uh, the incentives to, uh, to, to, to attract the, the people who has studied abroad or, okay. Sí. ¿Tienes algún dato? Claro. He's going to add something else. I just want to compliment uh, whatever you have said very correctly. And there is uh, an analysis of brain drain, and that's not a real problem. In fact, we are already, the National Academy of Science is developing a database to try to uh, localize, pinpoint the Costa Ricans that are outside of the country working and performing uh, different tasks and jobs that could be of interest for the country. But I would like to say that Costa Rica sees itself or herself as an open country where is her citizens need to go to the world to get to learn more, to get new skills and be open to other foreigners who want to come to the country. In a way, uh, you know much better than I that the Silicon Valley is not made up only of people from California, but from the rest of the US and the rest of the world. Where we would like to be not only the ecotourism mecca, but the high-tech mecca, and that will Suppose in the future that we have more people from other countries working in the most dynamic sectors of the econ of the world economy. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Madam President, for being here and answering our questions. Um, I'm a first-year MBA student and. It was really interesting for me to hear you talk about how Costa Rica is uh, establishing its competitive edge over other Latin American countries. And my question to you is, as you try and achieve this and also sort of create a presence globally and compete globally, what are some of the challenges that you face in maintaining local growth and at the same time being able to compete with your relationships with China and the US and rest of the other countries so far? Eh, ¿Los retos especialmente en qué área, Anabel? Sí, en general. Sí, sí. Um, well, we, we, uh, we, we are a very open economy. Uh, uh, when, when, when you have a, um, um, such a small uh, country with only little more than four million people, uh, you need to look for the opportunities abroad. And so um, we understood this very many years ago when we started to open our economy and we were very successful. So uh, we are very well integrated into the international economy. Our products compete very well uh, in the most uh, uh, important markets in the world. So that is why we, you know, instead of uh, uh, being afraid of continuing this kind of, uh, this path, uh, we want to e even uh, look for more opportunities uh, now. Uh, as I told you, we we have already negotiated uh, free trade agreements with the United States, with Europe, with China. But at the same time, we are doing the same with Singapore, with Korea, with Peru. Um, what probably is important is to have clear rules that can regulate the trade among the nations, and also to have the capacity, the institutional capacity, to oversee. Uh, on the uh, application of those rules. So that's what we are doing. I mean, establishing very clear rules and trying also to uh, build the institutional capacity so we can be able to, uh, to administrate the, 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 uh, the free trade agreements in, in, the, in the best possible way. Hi, I was 
was just wondering, um, you Costa Rica markets itself as like a sustainable economy and um, ecotourism is big there. I was wondering, um, since you have all these great laws on the books, I was wondering how you enforce them with like, um, I know that there's been a difference, a gap between like what's actually on the books and what's actually happening on the ground and what kind of regulations you have for that. On the environment? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think that when Costa Rica took this decision, um, that was, uh, I mean, to to uh, to, uh, uh, to be friendly with the environment. Uh, many people didn't even uh, understand the, what what it means, um, because uh, the most important decisions were taken uh, by the end of the 1960s. Um, and then we decided, for example, to protect 25% of our territory, the, 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 the natural uh, diversity of 20% of our territory. Um, and when we declare uh, those areas as national parks, um, there were no many uh, um, contradictions with some private interests. Uh, probably now it's harder um, because uh, you have uh, more interest in many different parts of the countries. But at that time, when we took the decision, it was easier. I had to recognize this. Um, and uh, since then, we started uh, um, promoting more and more regulations on protecting the environment. Sometimes, I have to, um, I have to recognize, we um, have uh, gone through uh, a little stress uh, concerning how uh, to balance uh, the economic development, uh, the development of private initiatives with these rules. Uh, it has not been easy, uh, but in general terms, we have been able to go through. Um, we also have needed to take some decisions, very radical decisions probably. Um, for example, very recently, we decided not to continue um, promoting uh, the, um, the mine industry in Costa Rica because we felt this kind of extractive industries do not go along with the kind of development we want to promote. Uh, so it was better to take this kind of radical decision instead of sending uh, confusing messages to the investors. So what is important is to be very clear about what kind of development you want and then to, um, to uh, promote the uh, regulatory framework according to, to those rules. Uh, when it comes to, for example, tourism, we have wonderful uh, examples here with me. Uh, is a, a very successful entrepreneur from the uh, uh, tourism uh, sector, and he has been able to combine three beautiful things. For example, being uh, economically successful, but at the same time, promoting social responsibility, and he uh, is the owner of one of the um, most recognized uh, uh, sustainable projects in, in, in the whole world. Uh, and so we have uh, this, this example uh, in Punta Islita. If you want to go there, I recommend it. Me vas a tener que dar algo a cambio la promoción. So, so uh, the, the, what, what is important is, you know, the first trying to decide what kind of development you, wa you, you want as a nation, and then try to send very clear messages, no confusing messages, about the rules that are going to apply to, to, uh, to the private investment. We have time for maybe one or two more. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mrs. President, for being here. Um, I understand that you're promoting uh, investment in clean tech, and uh, my question points out what is uh, Costa Rica's uh, con special conditions that uh, are helping for are helping the investment in, in clean tech, and what are the incentives that your country is uh, promoting? Okay, this is for you, Anabel. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> uh, thank you. We have been uh, promoting um, uh, 
foreign investment in advanced manufacturing for quite some time now, uh, for, for the past uh, 20 years or so. And uh, we believe that we have built a, a strong industry that shares some of the same uh, requirements that the clean uh, technologies industry require. So I think that is probably our, our strongest point uh, at, at this time. Uh, we also have a very strong uh, commitment towards, um, towards clean uh, energies. As uh, Madam President said in her, in her speech, uh, currently uh, more than 90% of our electricity is generated using renewable sources, and we have the goal of uh, reaching 100% uh, uh, of that. Uh, we also have a number of um, institutions uh, in this area that support uh, uh, the development of clean technologies in, uh, in, in Costa Rica. And we have a strong uh, system of um, what we call the free trade zone regime uh, that provides investors uh, with a number of incentives uh, to establish their operations in Costa Rica. So uh, putting all that together, uh, we believe that we have an attractive package. And we have already begun uh, to attract a number uh, of companies uh, in this area. Uh, we have, um, for instance, uh, we have one uh, company in the area of um, uh, wind turbines, uh, which is uh, important. And uh, we are also aiming, uh, as I said, of expanding our, our, our base in this area, uh, you know, based on these elements that I mentioned before. Okay, so, uh, and on behalf of Stanford, uh, I would just like to thank President Chinchilla and the Costa Rican delegation um, for coming here today. We have some gifts. Wow, the best part. The best part. <laughs> so, Presidenta. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.